Hi there, this is Saul Chiron from Saul Chiron Films and welcome to another random review. Today's random review comes from 1967 and Japan, again. And it's another uh, Masamura film, again. Um, this is the wife of Shezu Hanoka. Um, as I said, directed by Masamura. I've now seen um, nine Masamura films um, and they've all been at least very good. Um, you may have seen my uh, recent review of Manji, which was written by Kineto Shindo of Kuroneko and Onibaba fame. Um, well, Shindo writes the script for this as well. Um, this is just a fantastic film. It kind of works on two fronts. It's a biopic and as we know, biopics can be fairly dry and you just really want to watch them once and there's not a lot of repeat value. Um, so this is a biopic of um, Shezu Hanoka, who lived between 1760 and 1835 and was perhaps the first doctor to develop a herbal form of anaesthesia. Um, which may have been about 40 years before anybody in the West um, did it. But again, this film isn't just a dry biopic um, because it's also an excellent melodrama of his wife, strangely enough in the title, and his mother, um, so it stars um, Razio Ichikawa um, as Hanoka, who was an actor who sadly only lived to the age of 38 and ironically died of cancer, which is a subject in the film as well. But even in his 38 years, he still made 160 films because obviously Japanese actors made a ton of films, just like some directors who worked for the studios made a ton of films. Um, and sadly he would die two years after making this film. Um, his wife is played by Ayako Wakau, who will be familiar to Masamura fans as um, she is in Manji. A younger version of herself is in Blue Sky Maiden. Um, obviously Masamura with Black Test Car, Black, Black Report, Blind Beast, which is awesome. Um, Wakao is in Irizumi, which is one of Masamura's best. And she is also in Red Angel, which is arguably his best. Um, that's an absolute masterpiece. Um, but the wife of Shezu Hanoka is in the running for the favourite film I've watched this year. Um, it's just absolutely brilliant, shot in widescreen. Um, and as I said, because it's a two-pronged story, um, it's not just one thing or another, and it really works brilliantly well. Shindo's script is absolutely um, pin-perfect. It also stars um, Haidiko Takamaini, who has been in a ton of stuff, and Yunosuke Aito, who was in O Bomb by Okamoto, which I um, did a random review of fairly recently as well. Um, he's in it at the start of the film as well. So, as I said, even though this is a biopic of a doctor um, and anesthesia, it doesn't start that way. Um, it starts even as a child Wakao's character of Kay um, admires um, Hanukkah's mother, um, Otsugi, um, 
and she's viewed to be like so beautiful and elegant and one of the themes of the film is that beauty isn't necessarily um, you know beauty outside isn't necessarily beauty inside um, so even from an early age um, Otsugi um, is viewed as being really beautiful and clever and all of that years pass I mean the film's kind of set over like a 15 16 year period um, it is only 99 minutes but it doesn't feel you know you could have made the film a lot longer but it doesn't feel um, there's anything left out even though it's like 15 years over 99 minutes um, so at the start of the film Otsugi um, comes to um, Kay's parents to ask for um, her hand in the marriage of her son um, Seishu who is away learning about Chinese medicine and Western medicine so he'll be away for three years um, but she moves into Otsugi's house um, and waits for her husband who she's never met to come back um, from his studies so once again it's a film about women in Japan and their roles in Japan arranged marriages how you know sometimes women were basically just chattel to go along with a house or whatever and um, so Atsugi has um, her daughters and also some local girls um, weaving um, cotton weaving um, material which she sells to send to her son for his studies so she has a little industry in her house of um, her own daughters and once Kay goes there once um, Iako Wakao's character goes there um, she gets roped into producing uh, materials um, for profit again in the local area there's disease and poverty um, but of course this family is ahead of the curve in this because they are making money by producing um, these materials so at the start there's a very kind of loving relationship between Otsugi who claims to love Kai more than her daughters or just as much as her daughters um, but slowly over the arc of the film that kind of changes and then the son comes home from his studies um, much to Aito who is his father who plays his father is also a doctor much to his um, delight as he's getting older um, he wants him to take over the practice and you know, become the greatest doctor in Japan. Um, he, the son, does seem to be not that interested in his wife um, at the start. Um, who knows why? Because it is Aiko Wakao. Um, because he's just laser focused on his work. Um, and that work becomes he's obsessed about finding um, an anesthesia that can be used so um, more operations can be done um, I mean specifically it's like people with um, breast cancer or cancers that they can be unconscious and cut open without um, being in so much pain or bleeding to death and things like that um, so he is laser focused um, and he's not really bothered about what's going on around him or his wife or um, her relationship with the mother. I mean, Shindo's script is just absolutely brilliant. Um, the kind of little barbs that Otsugi throws at Kei or Kai um, are just like mic drop barbs. They're just so... Um, cutting but of course um, 
Iyako's character has to just kind of take them and bow her head. So, for example, when the son comes home, um, Kai goes and gets water to wash his feet, and of course, by the time she brings the bucket, the mother has already done it. Um, so, you know, the core of the film, if you put the medicine story to the side, the core of the film is really the relationship with these two women over the husband and the son. Um, and it's a kind of battle of wits between the two. Um, and it never really gets to, you know, ridiculous levels. Um, but it's always kind of tense and bubbling. Um, so the son starts experimenting. And this is the kind of... The one part of the film people might find um, a little bit difficult is um, he starts experimenting on... I say cats and dogs, but it's mainly cats that you see. Um, and it's from a flower that's growing in the garden. Um, so he wants to knock them out and see how long they sleep. And obviously at the start they're dying off and they're burying all these cats that hasn't worked out. And the cats kind of look like they might be dead cats. Um, and during the process... You know, there's cats that are um, staggering about, and I don't know what veterinary medicine was about in 1967, but some of those scenes, if you're a cat lover, might be a little bit difficult to watch. Um, but eventually he manages to knock cats out and bring them back, and they seem to be okay. Um, but then it gets to the point of well, at some point we're going to have to try it on humans. Um, so I'm not going to go into specifics, but some people get ill, um, but because his experiments aren't at the point of actually administering them, um, some people die, and that's another brilliant thing about the film. Um, it doesn't shy away from the brutality of medicine at the time. You know, people are cut open while they're still awake, strangely enough, because there's no anaesthesia. Um, people that you root for, people that you care about, might not make it the length of the film. Um, and there's no kind of sentimentality about the film. It does show you the kind of brutal truth of living, you know, in, the 18th century um, so eventually it gets to the point of who am I going to um, experiment on and then the relationship between the mother and daughter or, or the mother and wife um, really kicks off because each of them want to be experimented on by their husband or son um, and that dynamic really just ups the film into a completely different stratosphere. Um, it is so weird because while I was watching it, David Cronenberg just came into my head and it's like such a Cronenbergian film on some level. Um, you know, about the relationship between the mother and the wife and then when you get the science involved, it's like, who wants to be experimented on? Who wants to be knocked out but could die? You know, who wants to be unconscious for a few days? Um, there was just something in my mind that Cronenberg just popped up. It's like, this is almost like a Cronenberg film to some extent. I mean, it's, it's completely different, but it just kind of... Cronenberg just popped into my head. Um, like he does from time to time, um, but it's such a has a feel of a Cronenberg film, even though I can't really explain why. Um, and that's when it really ramps up, just gets into the stratosphere again. This is based on a real person, you know. Whatever the events are, I'm sure Shindo and Masamura took some artistic license. Um, you know, Ichikawa has the kind of selfless... He's probably the least interesting character. Again, he's just full of drive. 
um, he's just obsessed with the results rather than what it's doing to his wife, what's it doing to his mother. Um, everybody's in top form. I mean, Takamine as Otsugi, the mother, she's just, I mean, you'll, you will be kind of part driven up the wall by her behaviour and then also you'll have respect for her um, barbs and comments that she gives the the wife. Um, you know, Yaku's character gives birth to their their daughter and of course the mother's like try for a son the next time I was really hoping for a son um, you know which is literally just giving birth um, again there's fantastic birthing scenes that are almost that re again remind you of kind of Cronenberg I don't know why Cronenberg was in my head um, you know she's strapped up um, wonderful imagery the script's fantastic and again The ideas, the sacrifice, who wants to sacrifice themselves for their um, son. And then another character gets ill later in the film and is bringing up the idea again of women's place. You know, both the mother and the wife go through all this stuff just to lift up the son just to help the son have success and again it brings up points about you know Japanese women in society and the sacrifices they have to make um, for the men it's just full of great stuff um, as I said great performances and Shindo's dialogue is just um, absolutely brilliant um, it has a real visual panache um, again, Japanese architecture, um, one of the reasons I love Japanese cinema is because Japanese architecture lends itself to shot composition and the framing of characters. And Masamura does a really good job on this as well. But again, Japan's always had that relationship with nature. And obviously you have the scenes in the garden picking the flowers that eventually become... Um, the drug that knocks people out so they can actually have um, successful surgery without being awake um, so apparently the first um, successful surgery was 1805 um, and Hanoka would live 30 years after that so it's a space of 15 years from um, well before he comes back from learning um, about medicine to pretty much the point of the first successful operation um, in 1805 but again it's not just a dry biopic because really that side of the story is secondary really to the relation the triangle between these three people um, and only kind of comes to the surface every now and again so don't be put off when it sounds like, oh yeah, it's the true story of a doctor who found it. anesthesia in Japan, because it's not really like that. Um, it's way more interesting, way more psychological. Um, and again, way more Cronenbergian, even though obviously this was 1967, so that's pre-Cronenberg. But for some reason, Cronenberg just jumped into my head while I was watching it. It's absolutely brilliant again I think I mentioned um, on one of the Arrow releases of Masamura there is a guy who said that he's pretty much seen all Masamura's films and he has a purple patch and then either end of that purple patch isn't that interesting but man you know I've seen nine and I've got nine Masamura films as I said it's quite a purple patch because that's nine films that are range from very good to absolutely brilliant um, so I shall be trying to watch more Masamura Purple Patch or not I um, also want to give a shout out to Steve for Films because he actually commented um, on my Manji video and said he just recently watched The Wife of Senshu Hanoka and he would recommend it 
um, and it was literally yesterday when I watched it, so um, great minds think alike or something like that. So thanks very much for watching. Again, I apologise, it's another Japanese film. It's another Masamura film. Um, but as I said, I'm trying to get through my Japanese film backlog. Um, yes, I'll be sprinkling other things in, but I want to try and concentrate on my, my Japanese um, backlog because Japanese cinema is my favourite cinema, so I should really try and have no backlog um, regarding that, but you know how it is. So thanks very much for watching. Please let me know if you've seen um, The Wife of Shesu Hanoka and what you think of it. And hopefully you'll join me again for another random review. This is Solitary Ronin from Solitary Ronin Films. Saying farewell.